This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. Let's talk a little bit about the CTA shoulder joint replacement. The CTA, which stands for cuff tear arthropathy, is a joint replacement for patients that have arthritis but who can still raise their arm overhead in spite of having rotator cuff deficiency. So here at lower left, you can see we've got a very arthritic joint. We can also see that the humeral head is displaced upward, so it's rubbing against the acromion, which is this bone at the top of the shoulder. But this patient was still able to raise her arm up over her head. So in that situation, we felt like we did not need to do something uh, more major, such as a reverse total shoulder, but could rather use the fact that she had retained active elevation to do a more conservative operation using the CTA arthroplasty. What makes the CTA arthroplasty unique is that it has, in addition to the normal joint surface, it has an extension out here. So this provides a broader surface area for the patient to use. And you can see this is almost like a hip joint where we've got a lot of area for contact and stability. When we have broad area for contact, that makes the shoulder more comfortable because the load is distributed across a large surface area. So just to review some of the basics, when the rotator cuff fails, the deltoid pulls the arm up so that it rubs against the acromion. This is in contrast to the situation in the normal shoulder where the rotator cuff, here the supraspinatus, stabilizes the ball in the socket, keeping the humeral head from rising up under the pull of the deltoid. But when the cuff is absent, the head goes up, it can wear away the superior aspect of the socket, and uh, the shoulder becomes weaker and painful because of this abnormal contact. Sometimes these shoulders will become severely arthritic and have lumps and bumps on them that interfere with normal shoulder function. And sometimes when the humeral head moves up, the deltoid becomes slack so that it can't exercise its normal strength. What the CTA arthroplasty attempts to do is to not only replace the rough arthritic joint surface with a smooth one, but also to move the arm back down to its more normal position so that the deltoid is no longer slack but under its normal tension. So here you can see the broken arch with the humeral head having gone up and the slack deltoid. Here you see the smooth arch with the deltoid under more appropriate tension and that humeral head nicely distributing the load under the deltoid, underneath the acromion, across the coracochromial arch and into the uh, glenoid. Again, the CTA prosthesis has this extended head to increase the contact and stability. This keeps the, uh, away the problem of this bone here of the greater tuberosity bumping up against the acromion when the arm is raised to the side. So instead we have this extended joint surface so that the ball can slide smoothly underneath the acromion. Many cases of cuff tear arthropathy are treated with a reverse total shoulder, as shown here. We'll discuss this in another uh, YouTube. But uh, we find that, in contrast to some other surgeons, uh, this more radical surgery is often not needed in a situation like this as long as the patient can actively raise the arm. So, again, our preference when it can be done is this more conservative procedure that we call a CTA arthroplasty, and that can be effective uh, in spite of the lack of a normal rotator cuff, and it avoids the risks and limitations of a reverse total shoulder. So the CTA joint replacement is a well-validated procedure for severe arthritis in shoulders with a torn rotator cuff, but with preserved active elevation. It usually leads to substantial improvement in shoulder comfort and function. It has the usual risks of joint replacement, including persistent pain, infection, loosening, instability, and weakness. The CTA cannot be used when the arch is deficient 
or when the patient cannot lift the arm. And here's a patient that has um, what we call anterosuperior escape, so that when she tries to raise her arm up, uh, the arm does not elevate, it just moves up and out, as you can see here at the top of her shoulder. That's a situation where the CTA will not work and where a reverse total shoulder is necessary. Before surgery, we like to examine the shoulder to see how stiff it is, looking at forward flexion, cross-body adduction, external rotation, and internal rotation. We also want to find out how strong the shoulder is. It's really helpful if the patient still has good strength of external rotation and internal rotation so that the shoulder can have a higher degree of function. And the critical question is, can the shoulder be actively elevated? If the shoulder can be actively elevated, as shown here, usually a CTA arthroplasty will work and a reverse total shoulder is not necessary. It's important to look at the preoperative anatomy. Here are three cases of rotator cuff tear arthropathy, showing in each case abnormal contact between the humeral head and the acromion on top, and with superior displacement of the humeral head relative to the socket in each one of these cases. If any one of these patients had retained active elevation, we may be able to provide them with a good result with uh, the CTA arthroplasty. At surgery, we use the relaxed beach chair position. We make a deltopectoral incision. We release the adhesions. We stay on the safe side of the coracoid process. We release the subscapularis and free it up with a 360 degree release. One of the critical parts of this procedure is to retain this anterior um, soft tissues that we call the CA plus coracochromial ligament because this can provide extra stability for the humeral prosthesis which you can see just peeking out beneath it. So this particular surgical step is very, very important for making sure that the shoulder is stable. We also want to duplicate the size of the humeral head so we carefully measure that trying to determine what it's uh, diameter of curvature as well as its thickness is so we can duplicate this anatomy. We enter the humeral canal and resect the humeral head at an angle of 35 degrees uh, with an angle of 45 degrees with the long axis of the shaft. We're very conservative with our reaming to make sure we don't weaken the bone and we make sure that we don't oversize the implant and run the risk of fracture. We fix the implant using impaction grafting, using bone that we harvest from the humeral head that we've removed and drive that graft into place. If the biceps uh, is frayed or uh, damaged in any way, we will do an inside out teodesis, passing the biceps tendon through the humerus and then trapping it with the implant as it's inserted. Hopefully the subscapularis is reparable and if so, we sew it back to those sutures that we placed before at the anterior part of the neck cut. We are very careful to check the motion and stability at the end of the case to make sure that the shoulder is as stable and as mobile as it can be. So here is our patient again with the uh, irregular uh, cuff tear arthropathy shoulder. Here's her shoulder afterwards. We measured the head properly. We retained the CA plus and here's your function afterwards. Thank you for your intention. We adv uh, advise you to check out more information here on those links.